My dream job probably would have been to be an English professor um, or a, a women's studies or a gender studies professor, to be honest. Um, but my concern <clears throat> um, getting to towards the end of um, my time at Fairfield, I wanted to earn money and I, I wanted to just sort of like, you know, move on and um, keep going with my life. Um, what I do now is professor adjacent. I serve the professors, I serve the students, I serve the, you know, the, um, the other staff that use all of the systems at, in the library. Um, so that desire that I had in being a professor to show people, you know, help them learn, help them, help, help them think, help them, um, you know, discuss ideas and things like that. I, I'm, I'm still doing that, and I'm problem solving at the same time, which is also something I like to do. And um, I really like, uh, I'm, I'm a very organized person, so the, the classification and uh, the data cleanup and all the stuff that I do in the IT offices um, fits perfectly. But it wasn't my dream job. It, I, I kind of didn't know what I wanted to do, to be honest. I didn't have a real idea. Um, <coughs> but being an English major made me pretty flexible and it made me very eloquent so people thought you know oh this person can probably do whatever we give her so by the end of my senior year when I knew that I wanted to work for a nonprofit I really wanted to work in a museum doing development writing grants for a museum um, and I applied to a couple and I really wanted to go up to Boston I'm from Massachusetts so that was kind of the plan but I, when I got offered the job in Bridgeport, I obviously took it. Um, I was kind of, 2007 was pretty much the last year before, and things weren't great when, in 2007, but it was pretty bad a couple of years after that. So I was really glad that I had a job. And um, it was a really fantastic learning experience. I knew from the start that I love nonprofit. If any of you are thinking about it, I say go for it. You can make a career out of it. Don't let anyone tell you you can't. Um, you can pay the bills, like you'll be okay. Um, but I think within the first couple of years, what I loved about my job was that I worked in the same building where our residents lived. I worked with homeless veterans. So I, I wasn't working with them directly, but I was seeing who I was writing grants for every day. And so I quickly learned that maybe museums weren't the place for me. Um, and so that was okay that I wasn't working in a museum. And then from there, I just loved the nonprofit. Loved Nonprofits, and I did really like working in human services. So now I'm in a different area. I bring business people into classrooms to teach kids about finances, which is not maybe not what I thought I'd be doing, but the kids are hilarious. And I get to teach now the kids every once a week or so or every couple of weeks. So now I still get to see that why I'm, why I'm writing grants and seeing it in practice is really fantastic. So not quite what I thought my dream job would be, but it's still pretty good. Um, probably like maybe some of you in here, um, the dream might always be a, be a writer, you know, write a book or, um, you know, write, write a movie or, or something like that. And obviously the, those kinds of things, you know, go through my mind as an English major and were kind of the things I kind of studied. Um, I, I was very lucky to get a job at my dream company, which, which was just, you know, good luck and hard work, you know, as they say. Um, not necessarily the dream job, so to speak. So I started as an intern um, when I was at Fairfield, and it sprung out of um, Dr. Sapp. He actually helps. Um, he was directing the internship program, at least when I was here. I don't know if he still is. Um, he kind of directed me towards you know this being an actual feasibility. So as I looked into it, you know the the movie I mentioned went on my resume, kind of separated me from the pack, and um, what it was able to do as an intern. Um, uh, you know, I worked in editorial, and that's where I really learned. Um, what the jobs are aside from being a comic book writer who someone writes the comic book but that is not a job that you apply for um, at least at Marvel all the writers are freelancers so um, writing becomes less of a uh, at least to me an attractive career choice being that um, you know you can't kind of just go to work and do your job it is now your entire life whenever the project arises it's kind of unpredictable so I kind of realized that wasn't for me necessarily. Um, not that I didn't enjoy writing, but that in the in the actual application of real life, that wasn't what I wanted to pursue. Um, but as an editor, um, you you know you have an office. You go you work on this as a not strictly nine to five job, but more contained than you know three in the morning on on Saturday. Although that can happen. Um, <laughs> but essentially, I learned that there is more to to telling a story than just simply writing out all the words. And you know, as as an editor. Um, 
you know, you're guiding the story and you are seeing through the stages from the, the, the very uh, first idea to a finished piece. And that was something that was very attractive to me um, and completely translated from, from the skills that I learned here of, you know, to reuse the word storytelling, but also just being organized and um, being able to, to work with people and kind of all the things we've talked about today, that all goes into it. Um, so when I when I graduated from my internship, I didn't go right into that. I, I actually worked um, in consumer products for a number of years at Marvel. And um, what brought me into that, though, for my internship was everyone recognized my communication skills, my organizational skills, um, my reliability, um, my people skills. And these were all things that you know could apply to almost any job, really. Um, so what I did there was working with um, you know. Uh, licensees, basically anyone who wants to make a Marvel product, a pencil case or a, uh, a storybook or, or a sweatshirt, um, you know, I kind of worked, um, you know, kind of as an interface with them. And that's what set me apart eventually for the, for the role I have now um, working on, on comic books um, was because I was able to communicate kid effectively, not speak apparently, um, <laughs> but, but my writing skills and, um, you know, again, working with people and, and organization and all that kind of stuff. So it, it all can kind of work together. Probably things you're learning outside of your English classes will, will help you get that dream job or kind of realize where um, offshoots of that dream job that may be better than what you thought of originally. Yeah, I would piggyback on Mark's comments. I mean, I was, uh, I think I mentioned before, I wanted to be a, a screenwriter. My friend, uh, I had a friend in NYU at the film school. The whole plan was... F him to be the director, me to be the writer, and uh, uh, I think he's in PR now somewhere, but, um, you know, uh, uh, there's certain pivot points in your life that come into play, though, that, that kind of steer you in the right direction, and uh, I met my, my, I mentioned my wife graduated with me, we met kind of senior year in an English class, I think it was Dr. Mullen, I don't know if he's, uh, he's retired, but yep. Um, so started dating around Valentine's Day. She's a uh, Jersey girl. You're making us cry. I, I, well, <laughs> storytelling people, come on. Um, I, I was from Chicago, so graduated, went back to Chicago, bartended, saved money, came back to New York that fall, and uh, you know realized that in terms of like getting a job and paying bills, paying for an apartment in Hoboken, like you know, advertising was going to be my route for that point. But I still continue uh, to write screenplays and, and write creatively. And then in terms of how I apply it to my career, like I said, we're my group. We're the group that is trying to convince advertisers to advertise with AOL in creative ways. Uh, so whether it's packaging like a cool video program or uh, a sponsorship on Huffington Post or, or whatever, you know, we have to create compelling content to convince uh, advertisers to spend their money with us because we're not Facebook, we're not Google, you know, we're not Twitter. So we have to work all that much harder and be that much more creative. So, you know, oftentimes it's not just a PowerPoint presentation. It, now it's it's a break, it's a, uh, a video of our executives or some cool you know, example of a viral video that we create that I'm helping in that production process. I'm writing scripts. Um, you know, I'm I'm doing the things that you know I wanted to do, but like these guys have said, more in a business sense. Uh, so there's a satisfaction that comes with that. It's still a creative process, and you know, it's allowed me to balance kind of these other passions that will come into your life, whether it's you know, meeting a, a, a spouse or a partner or having children, those types of things. 